The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and good afternoon and welcome to our webinar today, which is about closing the deal and how you can turn contacts that you make who have inquired about home care, who you meet, um, how you can turn those home care contacts into sales. And we have um, me, Marilee Orsini, who will be moderating basically and asking um, our other presenters some questions but um, also I will impart some knowledge towards the end of this webinar and obviously I did help put it together so um, it's been a been fun working with my with my co-presenter who is Shelly Womble and Shelly is our sales champion here at Core Cubed and Shelly is uh, I love lightning in a bottle that sort of uh, <laughs> says uh, <laughs> a lot about Shelly and is, is pretty accurate but um, I've known Shelly for a long time before she joined Core Cube and she is one of the best salespeople I've ever met and also knows a lot about operations but has been in the industry for 26 years although she must have started as a mere infant and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and has worked um, for large organizations but in within that capacity has also uh, worked with individual businesses and offices within that organization so she really brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and I forgot my housekeeping so let me just do a couple of things number one we are recording this so um, we're going to get a question I'm sure about can you have the PowerPoint and what we do is we ask you to uh, log into our website go to Core Cubed and look at our learn section and we have our uh, the past webinars um, available for viewing so you may watch this one and you may share it with as many Many people as you like and you can also watch any of the other webinars we've been doing on a variety of topics for for many years um, I have everyone on mute which means that we're not going to hear your background office noise and we can present however if you have a question and we do encourage questions please go to the bottom right hand side of your screen and you may type in a question for us and if we don't get to it by the end of this webinar today we will contact you directly and do our very best to answer your question so let me just really quick go over our objectives for today because sales is something so completely different from marketing and uh, Shelly with all of her years of experience um, really thinks that one of the things um, that these are things that you need to know how to ask for business how to overcome objections and then I'll come back in as I say and talk about marketing channels towards the end of this webinar so Shelly why don't you take it away very good. Uh, thank you, Marilee, and welcome everybody this afternoon to our uh, webinar on closing the deal. And um, as you know, getting the call is just the first step uh, in terms of our sales process, and closing the deal is a much harder thing to uh, and concept to to talk about. So we're going to be talking about the inquiry process today in terms of our sales. And um, what you're looking at right now on your screen is uh, a, uh, it's from the 2016 Home Care Benchmark Study from Home Care Pulse. And on your left, you'll see uh, franchise organizations. And then on your right, you'll see independent organizations. And what we wanted to show on this slide is the idea about the amount of inquiries uh, on average that these uh, types of agencies receive on an annual basis. And these businesses are uh, uh, businesses that have been in operation for um, five plus years, so veteran agencies. And you can kind of take a look at the amount of inquiries that come in and then the next, uh, the purple, of course, is amount of inquiries, and then the darker uh, black or navy blue box is uh, the amount of home conference that results from those inquiries, and then our blue boxes indicate the amount of starter cares. And of course, in our sales process, we're very um, interested in getting our inquiry to start of care. And so what was interesting about this slide and what we wanted to point out um, is that uh, one uh, in terms of franchises it looks as if at least during this study time period that about 32 percent of the inquiries that come in um, made it to start a care and sales revenue and on the independent side 
that number is around 40%, 40% of the inquiries. And um, one of the very interesting things about this, and I think we all know this piece of information, but we um, it's nice to kind of see it and put it, uh, you know, see some numbers behind it to, ver to validate our, our thoughts on this. But what we do know is if we can get to home conference or to the assessment process and get into someone's home, uh, we have a much higher percentage uh, and rate to start care. And that is something we're going to talk about here in the sales process. So for just uh, purposes of uh, this slide, you can see the franchise organization, um, once they get to home conference, uh, they have 79% of those become care cases. And on the other side, a whopping 94% become care cases. So um, here's another graph that kind of talks to the same thing. But on this graph, what I wanted to point out is, uh, you know, again, that con that idea of that these are all um, agencies, regardless of whether they are how their ownership structure looks like. This is uh, based on the revenue. Um, and so you can kind of see small, medium agencies, medium, large, and then large organizations in this graph. And you can see that the larger organizations, those agencies that are um, from this study, 2.4 million and bigger, uh, they 91.2% of their um, home conferences uh, turn into starts of care and sales for these organizations. So one thing I, I think is important that I uh, would ask you guys to kind of think of in terms of a goal is uh, we always, um, you know, you kind of need to inspect what you would expect when you're trying to uh, grow and, and, uh, and, and work in our industry. So a good range that you might want to shoot for in terms of your agency, and hopefully you guys are measuring this and looking at this periodically, but maybe between 45 and 50% of your inquiry calls that come in um, would put you above average to these other agencies or uh, in terms of a good percentage of your inquiries that should become business. And then, you know, looking closer at that home conference percentage to um, to a start of care, maybe having a goal of 90% because if you're looking at your leaders here, you can see they're, they're at 91.2. Those might be good goals to establish within your own organizations, and hopefully you guys are measuring and looking at that information on a, on a uh, long-term basis and revamping and kind of looking at your sales process as a result. Okay, so um, how do we turn these contacts into clients, and how do we close a deal, and how do we get those higher uh, percentages of closure uh, with our home conferences and our starts of care? Well, of course, we need to begin with the end in mind following uh, Stephen Covey and his seven habits of highly effective people, um, always thinking about the end game, the end process uh, in, in our beginning stages of looking at this. Um, the end equals gaining a new client for us. And so, therefore, it's very important that we kind of look at that end process when we approach this process in the beginning. So um, one of the things we believe is uh, in, in, a, an area that uh, really uh, makes a difference and um, uh, in terms of growing our business and closing that sale is asking for the business. And all too often, uh, people just don't ask for the business in the right ways. Maybe the reasons they don't ask for the business in this inquiry process is maybe they're not sure how to ask. Maybe they don't want to feel pushy or like two salesmen like, or maybe they fear they'll scare them off with if they're just looking and they're just gathering information and they don't want to be too pushy. But it is very, very, very important. And we must not stop short of um, asking for the business in our sales process. If you don't ask, you don't sell. Typically, that is the case. Uh, it seems like common sense, but it's sometimes many agencies just don't do it or don't have that worked up into their sales process appropriately. So, you know, again, not asking for the business from your context means simply you may not get that business um, and most likely you won't. So making sure you have a good sales uh, script and word tracks to help your sales team uh, be able to do the inquiry process and ask for the business is critical. All right. So how are ways and what do I mean by asking for the business? How are ways we 
we do this? Well, um, as we learned earlier in the slides that uh, if we can get a new client to a home conference or a home assessment stage, we are more likely to um, close that business and have that sale. So um, one of the things that we want to close to um, is we may close to the fact we may say, when can we come out and do a home assessment? Or when can we meet with you and your mother? Or how quickly would you like to get started with your care? Notice that these are open-ended questions and important in the sales process. And um, it is harder for um, someone to you can't you have to they have to answer that question they can't just say yes or no to that question so they have to when you say that you lead the discussion into the next uh, stage of the steps in the sales process so um, if you say do you want to start care it allows them the ability to say no I'm not ready um, or if you say you know it's much better to be able to say well when is a good time for us to come out and meet and um, these are all very important things and and really the next step in the process. So sometimes we get the uh, people say to us, well, um, why do you have to come out to do the home assessment? And, you know, one of the things you can do is say this, if they're, if they're, they're not committing to starting care, but you can get them to commit to a home assessment and a home conference, then um, it's easy to say, you know, our next step in the process is to, you know, come out and do this home assessment, and it allows us to customize a solution for your care needs. And sometimes that just getting them to agree to that next step um, when you're in the home, you can you can work on closing and getting the home comp or excuse me, the start of care. Okay. So just a few words about the services um, that you provide and in this inquiry process. So when we're talking about the inquiry process in general, and we kind of jumped right to closing and how you ask for the business in our presentation today, but as you guys know, there's a lot of things that lead up to asking for the business. I mean, prior to you having permission to really ask for the business and say, can I come out to do a home conference? Obviously, there's going to be a period of time in this process where you're, you take the phone call, you're listening to, you're active listening and um, to the client's uh, issues and they're telling you their story and you're asking questions and you're qualifying all the services and they're asking for different things and you're trying to get your head around what it is that they are going to need, always keeping uh, in mind that your end game is to provide services. So you, you want to um, be careful on some things. I, I see you don't want to ask for business um, from clients who want services that you, that you don't offer. You don't want you want to. So you don't want to say, when can we get started when they've given you maybe a few things that you aren't going to be able to do. If it's completely out of the scope of the services that you provide, then what needs to happen is that you need to be working with some strategic partners um, in your uh, community to be able to refer um, appropriate referrals for those things. However, a, a good salesperson needs to listen to all the things that they're saying. So maybe they ask for pet care um, and you don't provide pet care, but all the other things they're asking for you do provide. So, you know, your sir, your person has that's taking these calls and working through this process has to be savvy enough to be able to say, these are the things we do. And although um, we don't provide the pet care, we have a relationship with a, you know, XYZ dog walking company in town, and we would be happy to help uh, provide those that information and help uh, part, um, coordinate services with that other service for you. So giving solutions, but also not overselling, not promising potential clients the world and not being able to deliver is really important in the sales process. But what's also equally important is that you don't just say no, that you have a good way of saying, here's what we can do and here's what we can, here's how we can help you with the other needs that you have. Okay, so knowing your competition is extremely important in this process, too, because you need to be an expert in all things that you do and what they do. It's essential. Um, how do we, uh, you know, how do they take their intake calls? What materials do they present to potential clients? What services do they offer that, and that you don't, or vice versa? Sometimes it's really good to learn um, what seems to work in a market, or even to hear somebody do something that you do, and then to kind of hear it as a um, 
as an outsider to say, oh, that didn't sound good, so maybe we should not be saying that also. So it's really good to position your agency and to stand out to know what's happening. And of course, here at Core Cubed, we do offer mystery shopping services if you're not um, going to be conducting those on your own. And so you learn a lot from that and you really need to know in this process about your competition and how you measure up to them. So, Shelley, we, this is the question we get the most from people, is how do you overcome objections? And I know you're an expert at that. Well, so I think the number one objection we typically hear all of us is going to be related to cost. And it, 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 this is particularly true when it's a first-time uh, a user of home care services and they're they're looking and they're doing their research. Um, so it is a variable, uh, it's always a variable in everyone's decision making process, but it does usually come up first and usually in the inquiry process, you know, it, it should, if someone's asking you for pricing, you really need to encourage the conversation to take place first in the inquiry so that you are gathering all the needs and listening to all those things and then when you get to a comfortable point to be able to talk about cost and this is where you typically get that objection so it's a good place to be able to um, you know educate that caller in a very professional way about what types of things go into your cost um, um, the majority of your cost goes to the wages of your caregiver and so um, that's one and so you have recruitment and training and monitoring and supervision and all kinds of other employer related expenses that you bring to the equation so it's very important to be able to have a good you know word track process in this to be able to talk about and you know cost in general and um, on the next slide, you'll see, uh, you know, more a little more about this selling to the cost objection. So you want to make sure you're addressing the psychological needs of the caller. So when you are talking about pricing and having already had the permission to, you know, you've already listened and heard sort of the areas that um, are, are going to be um, important to them. So, for instance, maybe you hear uh, in that uh, one of the important things is consistency of caregivers or maybe an important feature they, they're asking for is to have, you know, some superior cooking skills of some sort or certain cuisines. And so those are all psychological kinds of needs that they're very tied to and being able to tie your costs back to uh, those things that you heard in the discussion are very important. I think it's important to um, ensure that the care you know, will be personal and family-like and not a commodity. Uh, we always, uh, commodity means low cost usually. So um, being able to show your customization features and what makes you unique as an agency, that but addressing the needs of the caller, tying it back, very, very important. So, you know, the key to overcoming cost objections um, is how savvy your person taking the inquiry is with this process. And um, we did a good webinar, Marilee and I, uh, uh, about a month or so ago, on how to sell value over price in home care. And um, as Marilee mentioned earlier, you can visit the Core Cube website, and there's a, a section called learn and if you click into that you can listen to we did a whole hour on really getting around or talking through selling the value over price and home care which will can help you craft some of those words uh, word tracks when you're doing this process so another big objection we get besides cost is that mom or dad do not want the home care they don't think they need it they're in denial of some sort and typically or maybe not always but oftentimes it's maybe there's some beginning stages of dementia so this is often a concern for families researching care needs and one of the things you can do to overcome this objection is to assure them um, you know in the beginning maybe you can of course come out to meet the uh, the parent talk a little bit to them about your services, make them feel comfortable with the services. And on always another really good uh, thing to be able to do is to potentially, once you do have a caregiver selected that you really feel strongly would meet the needs of this client, um, how can you, can you bring them out for an introduction and can you help everyone to feel more comfortable with this? Sometimes that gets you right through the objection and being able to offer options. You can suggest a trial period. And another very, very helpful thing is to be able to 
provide some literature or coaching or just information uh, to the family to help them get through the objections with their parents. And so that's just always, that's not easy to do. But the more you have uh, agencies that have been around a well, while, have a lot of experience at this, at what works, and, um, you know, helping them to kind of get to, because ultimately safety is the most important thing, and, and uh, that adult child um, can really use your help in getting through that objection. So a third objection we hear often is, and it kind of, it's cost related as well, but you know, maybe another agency in the area is uh, less expensive or has different terms. And so it's important again, you know, stressing again that we must know who our competition is in our market and what they do and offer. Researching other agencies and offering costs, very, very, very important because we all know, and this is really a true statement, um, better caregiver pay equals better caregivers. And so sometimes when you're able to be able to pay a top notch, you can recruit the best, the cream of the crop of the caregivers and how you are able to um, talk about that in your inquiry process is very important. Also, we um, like to, uh, you know, remind our clients of our differences that in our differentiators in our programs, and maybe caregiver training is one of those things. Uh, caregiver training in some states is mandated, but going above and beyond, maybe your company is uh, using IPC ed materials and ha offer different programs for your employees, and those are all very good differentiators to talk about when you're uh, looking at comparison in the market. So reinforcing your value of services you provide and all these things uh, that are listed are very important in that discussion. You know, what type of supervision do you give? What type of monitoring do you do? Are there client enrichment or wellness programs that you offer? Do you provide written updates to the families um, or have a client portal that they can access and, and um, the schedule and other com important communications? Are there differences in the liability coverage or risk uh, things that you offer to your clients that maybe uh, is different than another priced agency? And do you have backup care in case of emergencies? All these different things. And again, um, the uh, we spent a great deal of time in this, uh, merely on the last webinar, and there's some really important things in there to to kind of point out. And and uh, very very important to be able to show your value over another. So. Shelly, you've you've talked a little bit about assessments, and I love your sending them to listen to that whole hour we did on overcoming objections. Because I agree, it was a it was a, a pretty good webinar. Um, but the assessments, as you showed in your beginning slides, um, getting in that in the home to get that assessment is an absolutely crucial component of making the sale. Absolutely. And and I, what I want to kind of focus on with discussion of selling at the assessment is I'm, to pay attention as an agency who that is that's doing that for you. In some areas, it may be a clinician or a nurse because of licensure. In other areas, it may not. Maybe it is uh, an owner or a, a person with an ownership mentality that you have trained and groomed to be able to do this. But obviously, the industry itself has done a good job with this, as those numbers indicate. 80% 80 80 and above, the time we get in there, we're going to get that case. So we definitely need to look at the assessment, make sure that in the assessment that we're adding value to that situation. And um, you definitely want that to leave, that situation with the family and the client saying, oh my goodness, how did I do this? How did I even live with us in this agency before today? So I think it's uh, critical that you do that. And um, one of the things, merely on the, there we go. So, when, you know, you, a person who does these services really needs to have a level of emotional intelligence to sell. None of what we do on the home conference or the assessment should feel like an intake. It shouldn't feel like a check off the box checklist kind of situation. It should feel um, like a, a customer service process or a sales process. And one of the things that I think is uh, really important is looking at uh, the role emotional intelligence plays in our ability to sell and and our competence in selling. And Marilee, you know, um, one of the things I advocate um, 
of course, because I'm a certified trainer with the Everything um, Disc Wiley program, is those we do personality profiling for sales skills. And I think that's a really good place for sometimes people to start to understand the person who's doing these things in the sales process, how they can better grasp, you know, what it is that their personality is like, how they feel, and how they might increase their emotional intelligence to a level where they can, um, you know, be able to do very well in the discussion phase of this in the home conference. So um, one of the things that uh, I think is important about this is once the nurse or the person who's doing the home conference goes out there, they have the ability to see, is the home cluttered? Is uh, Could there be safety modifications made? Sometimes the home is very different than what was described on the phone or what we got from the phone conversation. Maybe there's some signs of dementia that the family had not really uh saw seen yet like you can see as a professional anticipate the needs of the client and the family that they thought they didn't think they had I mean, you'll be able to see things that they through a different lens so when you go in there a seasoned person who's done this for you kind of sees that and so in from a sales perspective they oftentimes you hear the word upselling but i like to say upserving so how can you upserve this client uh, in that home conference process and really tune into and have that person not just be, I'm here to have paperwork signed out, <laughs> signed up. I'm here to provide the next step in our process, which is to really get to know you, really give us, give a little more advice, really see where you may need additional services and to really close that deal. Okay, um, Samira. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll come back in here and talk about marketing strategy because part of what we have found is you, you obviously have to have the talent to understand uh, and the training to understand how do you actually sell and how do you close deals. But you can have um, marketing strategy help you to nurture those leads and also help you uh, to close the deal. And I think some of this is – um, sort of skimming from the top because what it really uh, to have a good marketing strategy you have to have good branding you have to have a good foundation um, you have to really think about who your targets are so um, so one of the things when we talk about selling or closing the deal and getting the assessment and um, explaining to people why your agency is better than someone else. If you've done a good job of branding, it's much easier to explain to people the differentiation of your agency because you've thought about it and you're not just – uh, like everyone else. So um, the other thing is the agency model uh, versus the registry model. That is something that still comes up all the time. And in um, specific states where registries are actually legal uh, at the state level, uh, that's, that is even a bigger problem. But, um, but being able to train your employees, monitor them, supervise them, and just the relationship you have with someone who is an employee um, does make a difference in, in your relationship. So um, the entire team, everyone that works in the office and everyone who goes out and does home visits needs to understand the differentiation that you go to market with at your agency, why you say you're different than someone else. And it also needs to start at training. When you're doing the orientation, that's the time to start talking to the people that work for you about how your agency is different from the other ones and why your care is better and different ways that you can explain uh, to people to, uh, that you're working with, to inquiries, to your clients, to your clients' friends who may come visit. Um, it, it allows that explanation to be made by anybody who's on the team. Um, the other thing is email campaigns work wonderfully. Um, people you do get a lot of email. And there's a whole lot of spam. But if you make your email interesting and if you make it about the topic that the people had called and inquired about, for instance, if um, – if someone has a dementia, the mother has a dementia, and you are sending them information that is chock full of uh, tips and tricks for how to work with someone with, with dementia,
dementia, that will capture their interest. And so um, you can actually nurture your potential clients until they're ready to purchase. And a lot of the things I'm talking about, you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. Obviously, you can use Core Cubed. We do this all the time and do it well. But if you want to do it yourself, um, you just have to use strategy and planning so that you have the information in an orderly fashion to send out to people and you just trigger it for the specific kind of inquiry that you've got. So you're you're nurturing your potential clients from a communication standpoint until they're ready to purchase. And what you're trying to do is keep top of mind and you're trying to keep them thinking about you. Um, and so the email campaign does, does help to do that. Um, we like to provide monthly educational material because we feel that if you have something that educates the consumer or the referral source about the problem they're having or about how care in the home could solve that problem or make their life easier. Um, if you're coming back to people on a regular basis with information, not that's selling your service per se, but that is educating people about the benefits of home care and the benefits of your service, then that will keep them interested and they won't feel like they're being you know, sold to directly. They'll feel like that you're with them and you are working together to solve a problem. Um, it also helps establish your agency as a thought leader because if you are not just listing your services and, um, and, and selling people things, if you are actually supporting your sales with some educational material and some strategy, then that does move you into a thought leader. People will think about you as knowing um, how to care for people in their homes, and they will go to you as a thought leader, not just um, as an agency for services. So uh, the other thing is, if you have industry involvement, and a lot of us who work in home care do have pretty deep industry involvement, um, you can showcase that. I mean, you can showcase through your communication with your clients that you are involved with the Alzheimer's Association, that you are involved um, with you know any state advocacy or national advocacy efforts that would help with home care. So your email campaigns as a strategic reinforcement to your sales process can really be beneficial if you use them correctly. The other thing that uh, is beneficial is uh, social media. And in today's digital world, people expect people to be social and they expect businesses to be social. Um, now, if you tie the social media component in with what I just talked about with an educational component, then you've got a wonderful um, a wonderful composition to be able to showcase yourself as a thought leader and to reach a wider audience. So um, a blog doesn't have to be long. A blog can be 500 words or less. Um, you can, and so you could write a blog about anything that you are doing um, that's helpful in the industry, helpful in the community, um, any types of training that you're getting or giving, and any type of certifications that your caregivers have gotten or that your employees have gotten. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to use social media. And if you think about writing blogs, writing articles, and then taking every single thing you do but showcasing it, Again, helps you reach a wider audience. It's going to help promote you as a thought leader. And it's also going to pave the way a bit for your sales process because people will have a positive thought about your agency and have positive thoughts and your agency will be, will be top of mind. Um, goodness, one, one slide on website and reputation <laughs> management. Um, because this webinar is mostly on how do you sell and how do you overcome objections and the importance of getting that assessment. Um, we're not focusing that much on the website, but I, I just want to say in today's digital age, your website is crucial. Um, I am astounded when I uh, do you know, a sort of uh, marketing assessments for people and I see the shape of their website because we have so many statistics that show that healthcare is actually the number one search term on the web and that a lot of people before they call and before they decide which agency they're going to use, a lot of people are out doing research on the web. 
And so what can you do on your website other than, you know, the standards? It has to follow your branding. It has to be uh, have a good user experience on it. Um, it's got to have information on it that uh, responds to people's questions that they may ask about home care. Um, but the other thing you can do is add testimonials. And you can add testimonials not only to your website but to your social sites, to your blog. You can, if you get a good testimonial from someone, you can have them post it and then you can take that and repost at different places because um, it really is, uh, pe people really respond to testimonials and reviews. Um, and the social proof, um, that's just, if you're out showcasing what you're doing in the industry, again, not only are you proving thought leadership, but you are also showing your business's worth to your, to the community and to the market that you're trying to target. So testimonials and reviews are, are wonderful places for other people to read and see what others have said about your service. And you really, um, you need to keep your reputation stellar. Um, Home Care Pulse's study, I believe it was two years ago, said that the number one reason that some uh, consumer chooses an agency is because of their reputation. So incredibly important to uh, to have your reputation managed and monitored. Um, we do, by the way, have a reputation management tool at CoreCube that we use very inexpensively, but it really does help with finding out, is anyone saying anything about you on the web? And if so, how can you... Um, you know, go, how can you actually go in and, and react to that? Because you do need to react to something. If it's bad, you, you can't just leave it up there. Um, Shelly talked a, a bit about this um, in terms of taking an inquiry and trying to get that in-home assessment. But it also has to, uh, it flows over to your marketing materials. Everything that you do should establish not only quality, but, but the personality that you have and how you are going to, um, going to serve the person who is inquiring or the referral source who is inquiring about one of their clients. How are you going to serve that patient? So how you listen. Shelley mentioned reflective listening. That is something I'm, I'm very sensitive lately to reflective listening because what I'm noticing is that in many situations, particularly if, um, if the person has an issue or is emotional, oftentimes, um, the, the question gets asked, or a statement gets made, and um, instead of listening and trying to figure out what, what the person is trying to say, they're they are formulating a defensive response to it. So they're not really thinking about how they can help. They're not doing reflective listening. They're actually being defensive. So it's incredibly important that you, when you're taking inquiries, that you have a checklist that you follow. Uh, and not that you go one by one down that checklist, but that you make sure that you cover all the bases and that you take great notes so that when you do follow up with them, you can be personal about it. So you know if you're going to talk to them about dementia or about a broken leg or about, you know, a spouse who's, um, a spouse who, who's just lost a spouse and they were the caregivers and now they need help. So how you listen, how you respond, how you follow up, those all have to be personal and they have to showcase quality. And that attention to detail, everything that you do should look quality, should exude quality. Um, you, your marketing materials that you send out, the marketing materials that you leave by, behind, um, any type of educational resources that are posted any place, whether it's on your website or on social media, and any type of presentations or community involvement should all be taken seriously and should all be fall into that category as you're planning those things about how do I, how do I showcase the quality that, that I am. So, Shelley, you want to wrap up for us here and talk about closing the deal again, and then we'll take some questions. Sure. Thanks, Marilee. So, um, you know, we talked about, you know, knowing, uh, you know, closing the deal, what, what, are import, what are the important pieces to closing the deal? And, you know, number one, we definitely have to have a polished inquiry process. And on this call, we really didn't talk about the beginning part of that. We talked about uh, the sort of the objection pieces and um, 
how to uh, begin at the end, uh, begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey would tell us to do, and to think about how we want to how we want to get to that closed piece and how we want to start that care. Um, so we talked a lot about ob handling objections and uh, asking for the business. And so it's important that we, um, when we're asking for the business, maybe one thing I didn't mention, I should have mentioned is sometimes asking for the business is just closing it to the next step and having permission to have that next step. So um, when you're kind of going and navigating through this process, um, if somebody is hesitant to start care right away after that phone call, going to the home conference is a good place, or it may not be the home conference. If they don't agree to the home conference, then, then uh, getting permission to start including them in your collaterals and your campaigns uh, or being able to send them information is another good next step, um, as Mary Lee talked about all the, the different ways that we um, have a digital presence. Very important. And know your competition. So polished inquiry process, begin with the end in mind, ask for the business, know your competition. In terms of how we overcome objections, uh, you know, we talked about cost being the number one and how we help people to kind of understand by using and, and tying back to their psychological needs of, in the discussion and how we show the value of what we do uh, and uh, so that the cost looks is reasonable to, um, in in line with that whole discussion. Uh, we talked about how the senior uh, may not want care and how you can get through that objection or help a family get through that objection and make it easier by maybe offering to come uh, and meet with that person in, in as a next step or bringing in a caregiver that might be assigned to them as an introductory step and uh, also uh, giving them and coaching them on how they might be able to get their uh, loved one um, more comfortable with having care. And then, of course, uh, the last one is, you know, competing. Obviously, people are, you know, people are going to look around before they hire. They're, typically, they're not going to um, just call one agency. So you want that lasting first impression. You want to be, you know, if you're not the most um, – inexpensive option you want to be able to tie to your differentiators which are very important because in the end people are going to buy because they know it's this is going to be the service that they feel comfortable with and that's going to make their life easier and solve their their um give a viable solution to um the the situation that they've uh, you know decided they need help with so it's very very important i think people in the end, all those other objections can get you can get through those objections um, if you have a very savvy sales process. And of course, um, you know, uh, making sure you're selling uh, well and you have a great representation at the at the assessment and home conference stage, that you're up serving uh, and uh, and very professional. That there's some emotional intelligence with that person coming in as a representation for your company. Uh, using a solid marketing strategy, as uh, Mary Lee mentioned, with that high quality feel, establishing that high quality feel. And, you know, Mary Lee, when you were talking about this a minute ago, it made me think, you know, sometimes, too, one thing I've learned, um, actually, uh, you, you know, since I've come to the Core Cube team and with my home care background and, and my sales background, I think sometimes it's interesting how people see things and they say, hey, that's a really quality piece. But sometimes, you know, our own opinions may not. I mean, it's always good to get the advice of a professional, I think, and to have a, a second look at it. Sometimes those details you know, you, you get married to them or you're not objective enough if you're the owner and you love your company and you, you're in love with your, your logo and your brochure. But having someone else step back and, and maybe do something a little different is always, uh, you know, I highly recommend it, especially since uh, coming on board with you guys and taking a look at what you do. <laughs> and you understand the difference now between quality and oh, not yeah. quality probably. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So that's uh, our our presentation today, and we'll uh, merely we'll open up to questions. Open up for questions, and we get the one. Here's the one we get 100% of the time. Uh, you went over the gatekeeper, but what about the gatekeeper in the medical setting? What about the nurse in the doctor's office? How do you get past that gatekeeper when you're selling? Well, I think it's that's such a uh, loaded question, actually, um, because it does depend on to answer that question best. 
I find it's easier to really start to, to talk to that person a little more about exactly what setting they're in. So if you're saying you're going to, I'm just recently on um, our sales training course we have going on, Mary Lee, I, that came up with one of our participants and um, he told me that when he goes in, hit the doctor group he visits is in a hospital setting on one of the floors of the hospital and they actually are in cubicles and glass walls and he finds it very, he wants to go and uh, talk to physicians and sometimes he finds it hard because he has access to them in this situation, pretty good access because the hospital is kind of this open setting. Um, but uh, he finds, he once another physician sees him and hears him talking to another physician, they kind of move away so that they're not the next target yeah. when they cut when he walks by so that's kind of a, another kind of a gate another gatekeeper kind of scenario so you really have to look at the full scenario that you're talking about and I think one of the things that's uh maybe a very basic step you might be missing is if you're just going in there to say I want to come in leave my information because I think you need my information that's really the wrong approach what you need to do is be able to find out politely from the gatekeeper, when is a better time for me to talk to somebody in the practice or in the office that can give me a little bit of time to talk, learn about what, how, how your services work here, how a patient navigates through the system because we serve patients in the home and we, you know, have some very good programs that help uh, uh, people stay safe and well at home with good outcomes. And, you know, I want to be able to talk about those things because I believe we could help your patients here. So ha having that approach that maybe uh, briefly tells what you're there for, but doesn't just come in with a, a commercial, I'm here to tell you, leaving that door open to understand a little more about how their practice works and when might be a good time to be able to come by, I think that's kind of the best approach. It is definitely the hardest one, hospitals and uh, physicians, because you're competing with uh, drug reps and you're competing with um, if there are home health agencies on here, there's a lot of home health agencies that are there on a daily basis, too. So, well, um, and, and I'm going to throw out um, a couple of examples of the email newsletter. Now, granted, this is an email newsletter that we're doing for our clients, but um, but our clients who have used our email newsletter um, – find an easier time in some of the these gate key closed gatekeeping scenarios because what they have found is that the information is so helpful that some of the gatekeepers are actually taking that information and passing it on to their clients and to discharge planners they work with and other people. So there's a that's a perfect example of getting past the gatekeeper with actual marketing material. And another one is um, some of the rat cards that we have done, which are basically tips for the person with the issue. And we've had good luck with doctor's offices using those RAC cards to educate their patients. And um, But then, of course, it's branded with the agency name. So, I mean, the the couple of examples of not that it's um, a strategy that that works right off the bat. You've got to do what you said first. But once you have an, a relationship established, then you can continue to build that relationship with that gatekeeper so that they become an advocate for your service, not just, um, you know, not not just a referral source. They become a, a trusted and valuable referral source. So. Well, you know, Marilee, to that point, I think another thing to add to that I think would be very important is when you do come in with the collateral, you need – so there has to be some planning to this. You can't just be doing cold calls and knocking on doors. Well, you need to know what kind of physician you're visiting and what kind of collaterals resonate with their patients uh, and to do some planning to that, not a general focus, right, a more more – more laser focused approach to that. And I know there are a lot of, I know there's a lot of most materials. One, um, we helped uh, develop, a, for one of the most clients, we developed a, like a little prescription pad that they can be given to physicians to, I mean, it is definitely a collateral, but it uh, talks about the kind of services you provide and it can be given to a patient like a tear off looks like a prescription, but it would have things on there like bathing assistance and transportation, things like that. Um, just again, another kind of, you know, thinking about who you are, how you're maybe different than other agencies approaching that doctor. How do you show that differentiation to the doctor and his staff fast and what collaterals will resonate with their, their client base? 
And I just want to thank the person who put in a comment about uh, not being able to get into some of the social workers at the hospital and um, and that they are going to try the email newsletter. So I, I highly recommend that. Well, Shelly, you've just done a fabulous job as usual, and we are out of questions, and we are almost out of time. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank everyone who attended with us today. And I know Shelly wants to say happy selling. (laughs) Happy, I do want to, I'll say happy Thanksgiving because it's coming up too. But happy selling, everyone. Happy selling. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Have have an absolutely great um, rest of your week, weekend, and Thanksgiving. And thank you for joining us today. Bye. Bye-bye.